Shinya. I'm a solutions architect with Intesis, and we are based in the Bay Area, but we have a pretty good representation up here in Sacramento, including myself. Um, and this session is going to be on establishing or, or designing, architecting a mobility strategy based on use case scenarios. So I'm going to walk you through a couple different uh, use cases where mobility fits and where it doesn't fit from a virtualized application desktop um, and local execution perspective. So let's go ahead and get started. So everyone is here at the conference and I'm pretty sure we all have a pretty good understanding of some of the drivers for mobility that are emerging in the, uh, in the marketplace today. Things like work anywhere, work shifting, security and compliance, uh, simplified delivery, business continuity, and working offline, bring your own desktop, and unified management. These are all common drivers towards mobility, data center virtualization, desktop virtualization, app virtualization, basically giving the users the freedom and flexibility to work from wherever at any time so that they can get their jobs done in a secure manner. So normally where we like to um, start these conversations is around uh, the business priorities, organizational priorities. Um, what is it that the, the CIO, the CTO is driving in terms of these are the, the focus areas for the next three to five years? And then these priorities feed into the type of mobility solution that is then uh, developed and the strategy that's accomplished. These include things like work from anywhere. So you see that there's uh, you know six items, six scales. We usually like to prioritize. This is number one priority, number two priority, number three, four, five, six. Okay. So work from anywhere is one of the priorities that we see is emerging from the CIO CTO level. Uh, BYOD, bring your own device, is another priority that is emerging. Increase in security. So this comes from centralizing the data, um, data arrest encryption, things along those lines will fall under increased security. Better IT agility and responsiveness. This has to do with how quickly is the IT organization able to spin up new users, new uh, department groups within their constituents and their tenants. Better desktop management. This is the way we've always done things. Why would we do things differently? Well, there are different ways to look at desktop management than distributed model where the desktops sit out in a branch with a local branch server. There's other ways to accomplish that particular end goal. And then finally, reducing cost, which is more of the CapEx and the OpEx, capital expenditures, operational expenditures type of conversation. So we normally start this journey with a definition of what is it that you're looking to accomplish? What are the goals? What are the priorities that are being set down from upper tiers of management? Because all of these priorities basically feed into the end goal strategy. Can you have a completely distributed mobile model where the user's data sits on whatever device that they bring and they BYOD, it could be an Android, iOS, you name it, Mac, Windows device, and there's no security? Sure you can if increased security is way down there on the end of the spectrum. This is a government conference, so we all know that's not the case. Security is a big component of these overall solutions. So we need to look at that. Okay? So that's where we would start the model is define your priorities, figure out based on those priorities, what's the best solution to address all of those priorities in the right order. And then we look at the users and usage scenarios. Right? And there's a lot of them out there right now. These were just to name a few. You have Android devices, laptops, iOS, Mac, Blackberry, PCs, which is your traditional desktop model. You know, you have on the network and off the network, smartphones, Windows devices, Ultrabooks, desktops, and tablets. These are just a few of the usage scenarios that we see in the marketplace from a user access perspective. Where are they accessing the IT services from? and then how can we work back from there to deliver the best user experience possible for that particular usage scenario. 
And then this is my favorite. The many, 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 many applications that we have to contend with, both from a managed IT perspective and then from an unmanaged bring your own perspective. So everybody talks about BYOD, well there's BYOA as well, right? End users are going to bring their own apps into the organization. Well what does that mean for the organization? What does that mean for the government model? When users are bringing their own apps and they may be even collaborating using those apps with other users within the organization. What's the risk factor? Are we going to deliver from an IT management perspective? What are we bringing into the enterprise? And what do we need for areas? Okay. And there's a lot of different apps out there. Compliance regulatory requirements for all of these different access methodologies. This is where things like NIST, DICAP, FISMA, FedRAMP, all scenarios play. Based on the user's access scenario, what are the requirements for that particular model? This involves things like data at rest. We have to understand the requirements for protecting securing centralized or distributed data storage repositories, be it whole disk encryption, some type of sandbox technology, um, or other scenarios to protect the data at rest wherever it's being um, stored. And that becomes increasingly difficult in a mobile, mobile scenario with a distributed data model. If the data is centralized, it's easier to protect the data at rest. If it's distributed, well, you have to look at things like full drive encryption, and that really limits the uh, mobility usage scenarios that you can extend to users. iOS, does it support full drive encryption? Android, does it full support full drive encryption? Okay, if that's not the case, what types of usage scenarios can we support for those types of devices? Data in transit. So, understanding the requirements protecting and securing the transmission of data across trusted networks. So this is in the mo in the mobile most often it can also be on network if those devices are allowed to join the corporate WAN or corporate LAN scenario. But scenarios. So things like PGP, PKI, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. And this has being transmitted from world from the back of the data center to the end user's device. And the last one is data in use. And this one's the more tricky um, methodology to get your hands around because if you look out there in the industry, there's not a whole lot of companies that truly protect data in use type of scenarios from an attack perspective. Things like the SWAT file, is that truly protected? Well, if it's on a fully encrypted disk, it might be protected. Um, but what is the memory space look like when that data is in use, and how do we protect against that? It's much more difficult in a mobile scenario when the execution is on the endpoint to protect that data when it's being executed, when it's in memory spaces, and it's on a Starbucks hotspot, right? So this has to do with things like DLP. So let's dive into some example use cases and then we'll expand on these example use cases and talk about some other scenarios that have to do with um, the usage of the applications and desktops. So first thing we need to look at is where are the users? In this example scenario, they are off the network. That doesn't mean they're offline. It just means that they're off the network on a mobile connected device, on a mobile hotspot, on their home wireless network. They're either remote or on the other end of a WAN type of scenario. So what is the usage scenario? In this example use case, we're talking about a Windows 8 tablet. So this is your Surface, your Surface Pro type of scenario. And there's a bunch of others out there from HP, Dell, Lenovo. 
that have Windows 8 tablets. So where is the backend data for the application? In this particular usage scenario, the backend data sits in the data center. So what's the application's intended operating system? This application was written for Windows, so it's expecting a Windows native operating system to be present on the end user device that it's being executed from. Okay, so then what are the options for the runtime execution environment? Well, there's two different models that you could go down for this particular usage scenario. The first is hosted execution, where the application execution environment is actually in the data center, and it's a remote presentation of that application that is being sent to the end user's device. And that could be through various forms like VDI, which is a virtual desktop infrastructure. It could be through server-based computing, which is more of your terminal services and RDS scenario. This is application environment is in the data center, has direct access to the data that's in the data center, and then a presentation of that application is uh, presented to the users remotely. And the second option is local execution from the user's <coughs> Windows device. Okay. So let's look at all of these different scenarios and the fact that they're off the network, meaning they're remote or they're on a WAN. Well, what does that application execution actually look like? Some of the applications will play differently based on WAN constraints, latency constraints, bandwidth constraints. And when you look at the users being on the other end of either a wide area network or a firewall remotely connected from a Wi-Fi device, what is that user experience going to be like if the execution of that application is local, accessing the data back in, in the data center. And the final thing that we need to look at is based on this scenario and the options that are available, what are the data at rest, data in transit, and data in use security requirements? Well, it's going to differ dramatically based on what runtime execution environment you decide to go with for this model. Okay. So if it's a hosted option, you need data in transit to encrypt that session as it's being sent down the remote presentation of that environment down to the endpoint. If it's local execution, you need to encrypt that data as it's in transit, encrypt that data when it's in use on the end device because you can't trust the environment that it's being connected from. There's a lot of different scenarios that you need to look at as it relates to security compliance based on what model you decide to go with. So let's look at another model. So in this model, the users are on the network, meaning local area network. They have a direct connection to the data center. Life is good. All the applications that live in the data center, they are executed on the end user's device. Life is good. Okay. What's the usage scenario? Well, they're going to use a MacBook Pro for this particular scenario which is an OS X type of operating system. Then where's the back-end application data? It's on a network file server. So it's on a file or it's on a NetApp, it's on a Windows file share, it's, it's in the data center on a file server. What's the application's intended operating system? Well, again, we're looking at a Windows application in this scenario. So if it's a MacBook Pro accessing a Windows application, what options do we have available to execute that application on that MacBook Pro? Well, the first, again, is hosted execution with remote presentation. You may say, whoa, 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 we're on a local area network. Why would I do a hosted scenario when it's got local execution capabilities from that MacBook Pro? Well, you don't have to, but if it's a, an application that's intended for a Windows OS, and you're presenting that application to a MacBook Pro, you need to look at how we can actually accomplish this end goal. So the first option is hosted execution with remote presentation, and that's a virtualized app, virtualized desktop scenario where the execution environment is a native Windows operating system, and it's a presentation layer that's going down to the end device. And then the, op the other option is an option that Mac and VMware have been working on for oh, quite a while, and this is local execution from a Windows emulated environment, and this is your local VM scenario. So things like VMware Fusion come into play here. There's other scenarios where you can run a Windows OS 
on a MacBook Pro and have that local execution environment for that intended uh, application that was written for Windows. And then in this case, based on this scenario, what are the data at rest, data in transit, and data in use security requirements? Again, hosted execution, you're looking at that presentation layer as it's going down to that device, even though it's on the local area network, does that need to be encrypted? Are there any concerns from a security perspective that anything that leaves the data center be in an SSL tunnel, be in an encrypted fashion? Um, or is that going to be acceptable for a local area network scenario? In the local execution scenario, where it's a virtual machine that lives on that MacBook Pro, what are the requirements if that application has data that gets stored locally on that virtual machine? What are the requirements for the access from the application to the backend resource, which is a, a network file share in this case? Does that data need to be encrypted, either through an IPsec tunnel or otherwise? And then what are the data and use security requirements for this particular scenario? The next scenario that we're going to look at is um, a scenario where the user is off the network. Again, this is similar to the first scenario. They're remote, there's a WAN, there's something in between them, but they have access to the internet. They've got a data connection. So what's the, scenario, the usage scenario in this case? Well, it's an iOS device, so it's either an you know, iPad, iPhone, you know, iPod type of device. Where's the back-end application data? Well, it's a multi-tiered app that sits in the data center. What's the application's intended operating system? Well, in this case, it's a web-based app. It's HTML5. So what are the options? Well, the first option, again, is hosted execution with remote presentation. You think, well, it's a, web, it's a web app. Why would I do hosted execution with remote presentation? That's a great question. Is it Internet Explorer only compatible? Is it, um, you know, are there certain requirements where it can't run Safari on that local iOS device? Are there Java-based requirements where it can't run on that iOS device? There may be other requirements other than it being an HTML-based application. And then the other option is local execution from the user's iOS device. Okay? So again, they're off the network. The application is hosted in the data center. It's a multi-tiered web-based app. It's HTML5. And then based on this scenario, what are the data at rest, data in transit, and data in use security requirements? Okay? Data at rest would be minimal in this scenario because all the back-end application data sits in the data center from the, the multi-tiered web-based app. Um, so what are the data in transit requirements? These, these are things like SSL, it has to be HTTPS, type of communication from the back-end data center to that end device. Where are the users? In this scenario, we have an offline use case where the user has no internet connectivity. This is perhaps, from the hosted execution perspective, the most difficult scenario to draw a mobility case around. So let's talk through it. What's the usage scenario? Well, in this case, it's a Windows 8 Ultrabook. So it's one of those new, thin, ultra-portable, ultra-sleek Windows 8 laptops. Where's the back-end application data? Well, it's distributed, and it's local. OK. So that immediately introduces, you know, what's the security implications for that, right? What's the application's intended operating system? Well, it's Windows. Okay, so we're good so far there. What are the options for runtime execution on the device? Well, you only have one option in this scenario, and that's local execution from the end user's device. Now, you could accomplish this in, a multiple, in multiple different ways, you could do a VM hosted scenario on that end device. You could have bare metal virtualization so that the user's end device is running in a virtual machine with local execution. But at the end of the day, if it's an offline use scenario and the, the back end application data is distributed or local, you really have one option when it comes to 
the local execution environment. So then based on this scenario, what are the data at rest, data in transit, and data in use security requirements? Well, if the data is going to be distributed and it's going to be stored on that end user's device and there's not going to be internet connectivity for various periods of time, I would imagine that based on your security requirements, you're going to have some form of full drive encryption. Now, if it's a hosted virtual machine that's a local VM scenario and that virtual machine is encrypted, then you don't need full drive encryption because that virtual machine that sits on the local end user's device is encrypted. So then what are the data in transit uh, encryption requirements, security requirements? Well, nothing in this case because the application data is distributed. There's no back and forth. But there may be a back and forth mechanism involved with synchronizing that execution of that data to the back end data center resources. Things like SharePoint come into mind, right? where the application data gets synchronized down to the local device, they use it offline. When they're done with that application or that data, they sync it back up or check it back in to that scenario, okay? So let's look at modeling the runtime environment. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is evaluate all of the use cases. So the, the most important thing that you can do as an IT administrator, IT architect, um, somebody that is going to implement these solutions in your environment is know your users, know your applications, know your usage scenarios, know your devices, and then basically use those to formulate a picture of what department groups within your organization look like, what those possible execution environments within your organization look like, and look at all of the different use cases where the users are going to be accessing either backend applications, distributed applications, distributed data, and then formulate a picture for those department groups for what the best execution environment for those scenarios would be. And then based on that picture, determine the best fit for the use case. So if you have a department group that you know, they're 80% disconnected from the network and they're never going to be connected to the network. They either fly a lot or they have poor uh, cell receptivity type of scenarios where they can't use like a, a 4G MiFi device. Then you may look at an all offline scenario for those users. But I would argue that in this scenario that we're talking about in, in 2013, we're seeing more and more data access, more and more environments where you have some form of data connectivity, it may be low fidelity, but some form of data connectivity where you can connect to a backend application. And that's really the picture that, that we would typically design around, okay? And then based on this use case, let's talk about what makes the most sense from the usability perspective. Um, is the user in a scenario where they're toggling back and forth from multiple applications, they need to use their clipboard, they need to copy data back and forth between multiple different applications, and that's really intended for like a desktop use scenario. And the next one is they have that one app, and that one app is their only app that they use on a typical basis. Everything that they need is within that one app. You've got your communication scenarios, you've got your uh, application talking back and forth to the backend database. All of those scenarios are with that, within that one app. Things like call centers come in mind for this particular scenario. Or do they need just application to the data and they're going to be executing locally based on the applications that are installed on their local devices. So there's really a couple different scenarios that you can walk down based on those use cases that we talked through. What's going to make the most sense for the user? I will be the first, well, probably not the first to say, but I will say loud and clear that a desktop experience is not required for every single use case in the scenarios that you're talking through when it comes to mobility. In fact, from my Android device and from my iPad device and from my Surface tablet, 
a lot of times a full desktop experience is kludgy and it's not exactly what I need for that particular scenario. Things like, you know, using my stylus on a full desktop to get down to the start menu, it really doesn't make sense in those cases. Okay? So look at your use cases, determine what's going to be the best fit for those use cases. Does it make sense to give them a full desktop experience? Does it make sense to just give them the application? Does it make sense to give them access to the data through some, you know, distributed method like Box or like ShareFile or some other uh, SharePoint method where they can synchronize that data locally, execute the data locally, and then check it back in to the central repository. And then the most important thing is assess and design for the user communities. Okay? So look at all of the different use cases that would represent a department or an organization and then determine for that department or that organization what's going to be the best model based on their usage needs, based on their usage requirements. Does it make sense to give them a full desktop? Does it make sense to give them an app? Does it make sense to give them access to the data? In a lot of scenarios, what I'll be very specific about, is we get into environments where we run modeling reports, things like Liquidware Labs and Lakeside software that do these VDI models that determine, okay, what kind of applications are being used within this environment? And it spits back a bunch of data that says, you know, most, app, most of these users are using a single app at a time, or most of these users are using eight apps at a time. Things like that give us a better picture so that we can then paint the right environment for that user. But there's nothing that compares to giving the users application to all scenarios and allowing them to choose what is going to be the best use case and the best scenario for whatever particular uh, spot that they're in. And that's really the best approach from our perspective, from Intis's perspective, and the solutions that we design around. We really talk about enablement, um, things like giving the user the best experience possible for that device that they're connecting from. Um, and I'm, again, a perfect case for that, right? We eat our own dog food, we run VDI, we run hosted applications, we run share file type of scenarios internally. And I know that in any particular environment that I'm in, that there's going to be a best model for that. From my iPad, from my Android device, sometimes I just want that app. I just want to be able to submit my timesheet, submit my expense report, get that information into the back end application. And I don't want to go into a full desktop experience and deal with the start menu and all the other applications for that particular scenario. Other cases, when I'm going to be collaborating or sharing information back and forth with other users within our organization, sometimes a sharing mechanism or a file sharing tool like Share, SharePoint or ShareFile makes the most sense for me to create a folder, put some files out there, and then send a link to you know, other individuals within our organization to go pull that data down and execute it the way that they want. Um, I'm a perfect use case for the multi-scenario where you could have a desktop in some experiences, an application in others, just the data in yet another scenario. Okay. All of this making sense? So let's talk about the Enterprise App Store. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a poll, so I know it's still early morning. Who, uh, who in the audience has heard of the concept of an Enterprise App Store before? So there's, there's a couple different components that, you know, I'm going to kind of lump into this slide and we can talk through all of the different scenarios here. So an enterprise app store, the way that I look at it is it's your single point of entry into the organization, into all of the services that are made available to you from the managed IT perspective. So these would be desktops, these would be apps, these would be, you know, file sharing utilities, uh, data, data access methods. Um, but what kind of goes under this umbrella are just some kind of guidelines that say an enterprise app store should have these particular characteristics. And then based on these characteristics, we design the right fit for that particular user. Um, has everyone heard of uh, mobile device management or MDM type of solutions? These are like your uh, gridiron type of based solutions. Um, Citrix made an acquisition of uh, Zen Mobile. Um, so these are those type of scenarios where it's going to manage the entire device and all the applications and scenarios that are on that device. 
You have other concepts, and this is mobile application management, or a term that's thrown around the industry is app wrapping. Um, this is a technology where an application is developed internally. Um, we've had a couple projects with you know, Silicon Valley based organizations that develop their SAP based apps or whatever their different apps are internally for delivery to iOS based devices. But they want to have compliance around those particular applications. They don't want to just publish the map up into the Apple App Store. They want to be able to do things like user based authentication before the application is launched. Um, so that if the user gets terminated, they can disable their AD account and they no longer have access to that application. This is mobile application management or app wrapping, where you basically say the application was developed internally, so let's throw it into this compiler to put this wrapper around it, and then we'll distribute that wrapped application down to the Android or iOS type devices. Okay. Another one is uh, mobile information management. So these are, are things like the SharePoint and ShareFile and um, Project Octopus from VMware. These are uh, Box.net is another one. These are scenarios where, uh, again, you're distributing just the application or just the data down to the device, and you want some way of integrating that data into a central uh, mechanism like an enterprise app store. So this has to do with um, you know, file sharing utilities that are um, multi multiple version specific, so you can run it on multi-platform. Big characteristic or a big requirement for an enterprise app store is that it support multiple mobile platforms. Things like iOS and Android and Windows phones and um, Blackberry, if, you, if anybody still has Blackberry in here. So. <laughs> Um, simplify management, simplify IT management, and distribution of managed apps. Um, we've done models and you know, assessments within organizations and run these different reports and things have come back and said, whoa, for uh, you know, a 15,000 user organization, they actually have 4,000 unique applications that are installed into the environment. Right? How it gets there, nobody really knows. But over time, it's kind of like that BYOA model where every user is going to bring their own app. Maybe they've had a good experience with a particular application in another environment, and so they brought that model in. So they spun up some back-end servers to host that application, and all of a sudden, oh my god, 15,000 users, 4,000 applications. That's kind of like a, a three-to-one scenario when you talk about users to apps, right? So in these scenarios with application sprawl, a new concept that may or may not have been thrown around yet, everybody's heard of server sprawl that came around with server virtualization. It became so easy to spin up server OSs that, oh, oh my god, all of a sudden we've got all these servers out there that nobody's an owner of, nobody takes responsibility for that server, so we don't know what it impacts. Well, same thing from an application sprawl perspective. You open up the floodgates and you allow users to bring applications into the environment and maybe they're managed, maybe they're unmanaged, but whatever the case may be, all of a sudden there's all these applications within your environment. So one of the big characteristics of an enterprise app store is giving you the, the, giving you the ability to simplify the IT management and distribution of managed applications. Notice that I said managed applications in that scenario, not unmanaged applications. Users may still bring their own applications unless you have a mobile device management scenario that prevents them from installing their own apps. Everybody's heard of the BYOD scenario. I call it the donate your own device scenario. And this is the concept that I've enabled ActiveSync on my local device and all of a sudden I've turned over the ability to perform wipes, to disable my device, disable certain functionality on my device to enterprise IT. You need to be very clear and distinctive when you're talking about BYOD in your organization on whether or not you mean bring your own device or donate your own device. Because when it comes to IT managing that device, all of a sudden it no longer stays personal. I've got kids of my three-year-old daughter on my iPad, I leave an organization. Their policy is wipe the device. 
hope that data is backed up. Otherwise, I've just donated my device and all the data to the organization to do with it what they want. Okay. So things like mobile device management come into play there, um, but you have to be very, very careful when you talk about BYOD and a model that you're going to manage the mobile devices. And what does that actually mean? Most of the time it means donate your own device because when you leave, that device is getting wiped. Okay. And then the other component is securing access to data center hosted IT services through virtualized apps and desktops. This is a characteristic of an enterprise app store where the user gets presented with a myriad of either desktops, apps, data scenarios, and they get the option to choose what's the best uh, access or what's the best usage scenario for that particular device that they're connecting from. So this is all components and functionality of an enterprise app store. Here's an important one as we're talking about mobility. Provide unified access to mobile, web, software as a service, and Windows applications on any device. Okay? So when the user logs in, they, know, they not only get access to the virtualized applications, desktops, the data type of scenarios, whether it's BoxNet or you know, ShareFile or you know, Pro Project Octopus type of scenarios, but they also get access to those wrapped applications from the mobile application management perspective, other web-based applications that is really just making a call to another you know, intranet or public IP-based site, SaaS-based applications, and we'll talk about one of the dependencies here for uh, software as a service based apps, um, and then Windows apps on any device. This is the most important component. For it to be considered an enterprise app store, one of the biggest components is single sign-on to software as a service based apps. Okay? So these are things like uh, Salesforce. When the user logs in to the enterprise app store and they enter their Active Directory credentials that authenticates their identity, then they launch a Salesforce or an Amazon Web Services or a you name it, XYZ SaaS-based application. The credentials that the user authenticated with trigger a token mechanism to that SaaS-based application. And when they click that link, it authenticates them through SAML to that external-based application. This is an important component when you talk about enterprise app stores because the whole point is simplifying the user access to all of these different applications. If you tell the user, by the way, you've got access, unified access to all these different applications, but if you access this one, you're going to have to authenticate. If you access that one, you're going to have to authenticate. If you access that one, you're going to have to authenticate. And they could be different passwords across all of those different applications, data sets, and desktops. So the important component here is if you're going to present an enterprise app store for the users, have a component in there that addresses the single sign-on requirement so that they don't have to authenticate multiple times based on the application that they need to do to get their job done. Okay. And then the final one is empowers employees to bring your own device. And this goes back to that whole scenario that I talked about, um, differentiating between bring your own device and donate your own device. True bring your own device scenarios are components that when you leave the organization, they're not going to wipe your device. If there's a policy or restriction in place that when you leave the organization or when you transfer within the organization to a different organizational group, they have to wipe the device then it really needs to be an, uh, an enterprise provided device that is given out to the end users. If there's true you know, clarity on how that scenario is being addressed. Okay. Any questions on this particular slide? The enterprise app store component? So the last component, and we've talked through the use cases, we've talked through all the Drivers, the access scenarios, the uses methodologies. This is probably the most important conversation that I can leave you with here today, is perform proof of concept evaluations of the various vendors before you start going down a specific path or scenario. 
And the reason why I say this is because organizations, whether they're you know, CTOs or you know, directors over infrastructure, they can become frustrated when they thought that they were buying something and ended up buying something else. And the only way that you truly vet out all of your different access scenarios, your usage methodologies, and whether or not the scenario is going to address the needs of the organization is to perform a proof of concept evaluation of the particular vendors and the applications. Okay? And any leading vendor that has a solution that's designed around mobility, whether it's a hosted app scenario, hosted desktop scenario, a share, you know, a file sharing scenario, they're all going to have evaluations of their products that can be downloaded and implemented into your organization so that you can truly vet out, is this going to work before we start going entirely down that path, okay? So this is um, kind of my shout out to all of the sponsors. Some are here, some aren't, um, that are leading the charge in terms of mobility, desktop virtualization, app virtualization. This gives you just a picture of the many different options that are out there. So VMware has their Horizon suite, Good has a mobile device management solution that's called Good for Enterprise. Symantec has a mobile manager. Citrix has their enterprise mobility application and desktop scenario. And these are things like uh, Cloud Gateway Enterprise and Zen Desktop for hosting applications and desktops. Um, Samsung has a product that's called uh, Samsung Approved for Enterprise. Box has an enterprise product where they actually host the data inside of your data center. So it's a file sharing utility, but the data at rest scenarios are protected behind your firewall. AppSense has a component they call uh, Data Now and Mobile Now, which are mobile device management scenarios, uh, data access scenarios like a file sharing utility, and they have components that sit behind your organization's firewall so the data is protected at rest. Microsoft has their desktop virtualization scenario, and there's a lot of different facets of that from the remote desktop perspective to the remote app perspective to a VDI-based scenario that's you know, on Windows Server 2012 with Windows 8. Mocha 5, if anybody's heard of Mocha 5, they have a bare metal hypervisor scenario that you can install on a MacBook Pro that gives you server level virtualization of that hardware so then you can install a Windows OS or a Mac OS X operating system into that environment. The last one is Mobile Iron, their VSP product, which is mobile device management, which some of you are probably already familiar with. This is a big player. Okay, so I'll let you guys take a screenshot. Any questions on this particular slide as it relates to all the vendors and the different mixes that are available to address mobility and desktop app virtualization? Okay. So I'm going to summarize all the different components that I've talked through through this session so we can kind of wrap things up and kind of formulate that full picture of what this uh, scenario is going to look like. So the first step is to assess the key business drivers and the priorities within the organization. If you don't know where you're aiming to, if you don't know what your end goal is, you're not going to be able to address that and meet all of those requirements within your organization. Evaluate the users and the usage scenarios, things like assessment modeling tools like Lakeside, Liquidware Labs will help you in assessing and evaluating the users and usage scenarios. There's nothing that beats one-on-one -on -one interviews and scenarios where you're uh, having a conversation with the different users within the departments of your organization. Inventory the existing line of business applications and migration trends, both from a managed and IT-based perspective and an unmanaged and BYO apps type of scenario. And this is, this is very important to this, um, you know, this, this guideline. Um, it, we, we had a company that we did some work with, and they came to us and said, hey, we want to do, get on this you know, VDI bandwagon, and you know, we want to do this desktop virtualization deal. And when we started talking through all of their different trends within the organization, we found out that they had a significant push from the top level of the organization all the way down to get off a Microsoft-based platform. 
They wanted to go to an open stack or an Apache-based type of scenario where everything was mobile and everything was Web 2.0 and everything was HTML5. And that went all the way down to their line of business applications. And we started talking through, well, the VDI scenario is going to address all of your Windows-based applications, but it's not going to address your Mac OS X-based applications, your you know, DMG-based installers, or any of those other scenarios that you may be looking to address within this organization. And a VDI and a hosted model, unless the, the web-based app is internal and you don't want to expose it externally, really doesn't make sense from a mobile perspective to do web-based apps through a hosted scenario down to that end user's device. So it's really important to understand what are the drivers, what are the trends, what are the movements within your organization from an application perspective? Because if your driver is get off of a Windows platform by 2015, your differentiator distinction to go to a VDI server-based computing model is going to be completely different from somebody that is in love with the Microsoft product, understands the value that Microsoft brings, is fully office-based and you know all the SQL-based characteristics within the organization. So it's important to understand that component. I'll, I'll leave that piece there. I like Microsoft, by the way. So. <laughs> and centralized, rec recognize the centralized and distributed data models, including any security and compliance requirements. So this goes back to, you know, who are your regulators? Who are your compliance restrictions that determine what are the security practices that have to be implemented from a data at rest, data in transit, and data in use type of characteristic. Model the runtime environment runtime execution environment for each use case. So walk through those usage scenarios, walk through those users, where they're accessing the data from, what types of applications they're accessing, and then model that runtime environment for each use case. Understand the value of an enterprise app store approach to enable mobile work styles. So maybe you do have some web-based apps, maybe you do have some mobile-based apps, maybe you have some Windows-based apps. Presenting all of those applications and those usage scenarios to the user in a single pane of glass, and I hate to use that term, but I will, in a single pane of glass so the user can digest whatever applications, desktops, data that they need to get their job done. That's probably the most important characteristic here. Evaluate vendor offerings through multiple proof of concept engagements. This is probably the most time consuming and tedious work that you're gonna do on this journey to mobility. You have to look at the products what the vendors can offer and determine what's going to be the best fit to address 80% of your use cases, 95% of your use cases, maybe 100% of your use cases. You have to look at the vendor's products. And then most importantly, because I work for a reseller and an integrator, work with a partner to assess and design a mobility strategy. So this is where you engage the expertise of somebody that works in these technologies with other organizations to look at what others are doing outside of your organization to determine what's going to be the best fit moving forward. So a little bit about our company, Intesis and Agile 360. We have four offices throughout the state of California. We're all California based. We do some work outside of the state, but we uh, are, are based in California. Um, two offices in Northern California, two offices in Southern California. Um, we're leading partners of most of the vendors that I talked through there, the Microsoft, Citrix, VMware, HP, NetApp from our infrastructure practice, Red Hat. So we have expertise from an integration standpoint to help you through these different scenarios. We have a couple minutes. Are there any questions based on uh, the content that was presented? Don't be shy. But I hope this was valuable to you. If you, if you have any questions and you just don't want to um, speak up in front of everyone, come hit me up afterwards. Um, my information is on this slide. Um, I'm, twi I'm on Twitter. I'm very active there. Um, so I've been using the uh, GovMobile2013 hashtag this morning. Um, and then my personal blog is, is on that page as well. So thank you very much for coming, and thank you for attending. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.